Now for something almost completely different. Welcome to the original No Man's Sky. This will be uh, an early stream. I won't be around later. So I'm going to do a bunch of things for you today, including um, Space Engine, followed by Verlay Swing, whatever the fuck that's called, and then Soul Calibur. So what are we doing today? Well, I figured I could get away with this because it's so early. There's not going to be a lot of people here. So I'm going to um, going to probably die a little bit on the inside while I do this, but I've done this for every um, other album, and I've waited a full year to do it for this one. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to check out the, the new version of Space Engine, which looks amazing. And I'm going to play Stranded and Another Light and also tell you some stories I remember, if I remember any, of um, the recording. And that's really, that's what I did for the previous albums. If that's not something you're into, then uh, come back later. <laughs> you know, I really want people to hear the music. Uh, my, sh my shitty band is, it's fun for me, and I like when people hear it. And so... This was an idea from a viewer, actually, and I thought it was a good one. Space Engine plus Another Light seemed like a good idea. So, that is the stream today. And also, considering we're an indie band with no real promotion, we don't really have anything like that. Uh, barely, if that. This seems like a good way to get at least three or four other people into the band. Maybe five? So before I do anything with music, I want to explain Space Engine so you know what you're getting into. Space Engine recreates... And I don't really know how to play this fully, but it recreates... the universe. Some of it's procedurally generated. Well, most of it is. Um, and, and other bits of it are actually based on the planets in our solar system. Um, and, and if you buy the toys, you can get extra guns. It is a beautiful game, one that has brought me to deep, weird emotional depressions. I don't know why, but it has. Especially how crusty those clouds are. But also makes me feel alone but, like, I'm part of a big, crazy universe. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's a really beautiful thing, and I love space, I love the universe. I love thinking about the universe, like, once a year, maybe twice a year at best. And this game does it really, really well, aside from crusty clouds, but... I mean, I haven't played this in, like, two years, and when I did, it was copyright uh, claimed and blocked, because I played a bunch of, like, Radiohead and Flaming Lips. And, um... Yeah, it's it's kind of amazing. So there's even a spaceship mode where I think you can import like the Enterprise. Which is what you're hearing right now. You're hearing the white noise of the Enterprise. You can you can discover different star systems. You can go into different galaxies, different solar systems. It's crazy how much you can do in this. I'm going to have to figure out a lot of this as I go along. Um, I should probably figure out some of it before I even play any music, because that's going to take up some attention. Um, but yeah, Earth is in this. Can't get copyright claimed if it's my own music. Right? Unless, unless you can. Vinny, can you find Elon's car? Elongated musket. My favorite dude who smokes weed without inhaling. Um, and loves anime, according to his Twitter. And also talks about how he, he likes video games strange man but anyway yeah it's it's a cool game you can increase the time scale and watch the earth do its thing there's some aurora borealis here cool well that and magnitude limit i don't know what that means 
Oh, oh, I see. You can uh, increase. Oh, shit. Look at that. My god, it's full of stars. Black holes were added. Sagittarius A is a good black hole. This right here? Oh, it's a star. Whoa. You need the standard HD pack for much better moon, Mars, and Earth. That's okay. We're, we're just gonna fuck around. Anyway. So. We shall begin. This is gonna be, I think, fun. And I'm gonna try real hard I'm going to try real hard to listen to this music objectively and not want to fall into a pit while I while I play it. And I'll share some stories and I have um, a demo that no one's heard yet that I'll play a little bit. So here we go. So this is some Red Vox. This is what, if, if you didn't know, this is what my band sounds like. This is the Spotify version. So this is the one we just put out. And that beep, so Bill played this, I could tell you a couple things real quick. That beep was actually like, you know the bars and tone noise from the TV? We cut that up, pitched it up, put some echo on it, and reverb, and the stream has gone offline. Sorry, played copyrighted music. There's no new songs tonight, sorry. Today. And we may... We may have ripped off of Echoes a little bit. And some other Floyd, too. If we, if we rip off Floyd, you gotta rip off a number of Floyd. Am I stuck? Am I stuck? Why are you me that was quick. Lost to the void all sense of time. Lyrics fit. I hadn't sang for a while when we did this, so I had to, I, I had to try. This wasn't effortless. I'm not an effortless singer by any means. So here's a little clue. Um, The, the dude in the song is talking to himself, or maybe, I don't know, maybe God. That's the only clue I'm giving. Um, so this was the demo. We did this as a placeholder guitar solo for this part, and we just left it. Sounded good. Someone just said Fallout demo today, Vin? No. Glitch out. I'm good. I'm 
so for people it sounds uh, saying it sounds like Coldplay, I take that as a compliment. It's one of the highest selling bands of all time. Are you crazy? Also, fuck you. Um, no, it, sure, there's a little bit of maybe that in there, like that first couple album. But also, I think um, more Radiohead and Floyd, much more Floyd. Here, I'll do it like Chris Martin. Who's on wise who is, and I'll throw it all. Those acoustic guitar chords were a last minute addition. Joe really nailed the, the mixing of the song and also the bass line. He was proud to do some Roger Waters shit and it worked. The Roads with Bill, excellent addition to the song. So we had to increase the tempo for this part because it dragged a bit. And that was pretty crazy for me and Mike in particular. Because then we had to relearn how to play the fucking song again at a faster tempo. One of these days, I'm going to cut you into little pieces, chat. It's a Pink Floyd reference. Please don't think this is all just one take, because it really wasn't. I'm not ashamed to admit that. This is a globular. I'd like to think the narrator of the song might be in a globular somewhere by now. Guitar on the right, Joe played that. I played the acoustic on the left, and the solo in the middle is still there, but it's really... It's all back and distorted. I like this part. Someone said, Vinny, when are you and Joel going to do a collab? I don't really like to collaborate. I'm a bastard. Ask Mike, he's here. But more so than that, with very different musical backgrounds. Very, very, very different musical backgrounds and interests. I don't know where, like, what middle ground we would meet in. Also, this is very bright trying to find cool shit and I just keep getting deserts and bright objects oh shit oh that's kind of nice
sweep in there. So what else can I tell you about the song? Um, press F2 to see object in the system. Well, I'm proud of it, but I hate it now because it took four or five months to record. And um, as I said last time, it's not something I, I really plan on. I don't really want to do a full album of like nine to 12 minute songs. Um, it took a while. Everyone was busy while it was happening. So it was like piecemeal. But everyone did a great job. Mike killed it on the drums. I mean, we, what we did with that was um, we played it a lot until we, we liked where it was. And then we started recording it. But then a lot of unexpected things kind of happened along the way. Like, oh, we need to speed up this part. We need to speed this part up. We need to slow this part down. Okay, we're going to do an acoustic guitar here. It wasn't all planned. A lot of it was just kind of accidental. And it was, it was frankly a nightmare to record, but, and lyrics took a while, but I'm glad it happened because we made a Pink Floyd song, God damn it. And Pink Floyd is one of my favorite bands. So we, we got like a little bit of echoes in there. We got one of these days. We got a lot of stuff that we, we all really grew up listening to. And I, I love it. I don't remember how to play most of it. But luckily, I don't need to remember anything like that right now. Um, good. So after that song, yeah, it's an homage. Uh, after that song, the decision was like, I want to do stuff that I can record in like a couple days before I do anything crazy again. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. And... Is there anything else that happened? I can't think of any other stories. So here's the thing. Like I said last time, I've done a stream like this for all the other albums. I know it's, uh, it's exactly what it seems like. It is listen to our music. Luckily, people have responded really well. And the album did really well. But for the four or five of you that haven't listened to it yet, maybe you'll like it. Uh, God knows we're not making a profit and God knows we're not really looking to make any money off of this stuff. This is just for the love of making music. And I, I happen to live a lifestyle where I can, I can do such things. So here's another light. Total attempt to rip off the tone of airbag from OK Computer. Mike and I fiddled with knobs in tandem to get that sound of that synth. So I sang this at home. chorus uh, again it's probably a little bit the sound might be a little crusty because i'm doing the spotify version um i sang this at home because i wasn't getting it in the studio and i really needed to like get up on that microphone so then i sang it got it to joe he put it in mixed it bueno that word aberration is a good one
that last bit. Um, before we go on to the next song, which they seamlessly go into each other, which was kind of an, a happy accident. We just noticed that they were in the same key. But the thing about this is this album was accidentally a concept album. I'm not going to pretend like it was one from the start because it wasn't. Um, it was almost called Settle for Less. That was the initial name of the thing. But it started kind of it was like, hey, wait a minute. Is this album called Another Light? It's like, yeah, I think it is. But the cool thing about it is it worked out and some of the songs like kind of flowed into each other and we just kind of, we, we ran with it. Here's a little something that has not been played. This is the demo for Another Light. Some of it was used on the final recording. This is what I made at home. That's incorrect. That's just a pre-mixed version. I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> so that's the version before it was mixed. Here's the one that I made at home. Got a little phaser on the guitar. Sorry, that was a little japes. pretty much it it's just that one thing yes i said owl yeah it was pretty much different lyrics uh very early version that was pretty much it it kind of i'll put that eventually on the Bandcamp page but i forgot to i feel like yeah some of the stuff that we used from that mainly the strings i think but i changed them up a little bit and then the rest was all redone there was like um a hi-hat thing in there otherwise I think it worked out. Someone said, can you comment on how the end of what could go wrong ended up as that? Well, this is a potato. Let's start with that. The answer is, I just heard it in my head. I was like, oh, wait a minute. That little thing at the end there, that could be something. And then it became something. But it was not always the case. Just sounded like there could be a baseline behind it. And once I got the baseline, I went on a walk, totally sober, mind you, and I came up with the rest of the song and it worked and I knew it was going to be short and I didn't want to overcomplicate it. Anyway, here's the other song. Two guitars doing the left guitar 
Joe doing the one on the right. Three separate days of singing this to get it right. Maybe I didn't. Man, the textures here aren't. Should have got that HD pack, huh? It looks like a nipple, Mars. Where's Olympus Mons? Hang on a minute. There it is. So, Bill played the roads on this. You can hear it. It's the keyboard. And we liked it so much that we put the volume up. <laughs> That's really all I can say about that. Also, lyrically, this was like, as I said the other night, it was like shitting out like a 15-pound baby. It was tough. But it worked. There's a recommendation from chat. Oh, good, it crashed. Good recommendation. Yeah, what can you do? Joe guitar solo. Whoa, we got music now? I was like, wait a minute, I didn't put this on the album. Um, yeah, that's kind of a little Wilco in there. Joe is a better guitarist than me by quite a bit i can do what i have to do with practice but he is way better and sometimes i just want to do the thing because in practice i end up coming up with it like this next song i did that but he is a better guitarist he's been playing longer he's better and he's awesome someone said are there vocal and instrumental tracks available there are not we do not have stems available for mainly laziness reasons and also because we're always working on new stuff maybe one day and this is why the album was delayed four months. You gotta live a little. You gotta I don't know if it was worth it. We've got a long, cold history. If but again, Radiohead. It's because you're just too close to me. Past the living room, a rose tinted. I really like the uh, guitar tone that Joe got for this one. And Mike doing the Nick Mason chill thing. Perfect. Yeah, it's good. What a Venus with Serena Williams. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, this I wrote... Uh, like on Easter, and it was bad. It was a bad holiday for me. I don't know what that says, but I was just not having a good day.
Anthony, you're my favorite SoundCloud rapper. Thanks, bro. I think I enunciate too much. I had a guitar solo here in the previous version that did not work at all. I'll play it after this. And this is my Brian Wilson moment. I was like in a huge Beach Boys phase when I was doing this, and I wanted to do Brian Wilson, so I did. This almost sounds like creepy space music. myself sick. It's actually just to feel all right at the end there. Um, okay, so I have a, a couple secrets where you, while you watch Saturn. Secret one is there's two reasons why there's a vocoder coder moment. Is that what it, it's a vocoder? Yeah, at the end there. One, I was listening to Pond, and they did it, and it sounded great. Two, probably the more important reason, I couldn't sing it. It wasn't sounding good. I tried lower register, I tried higher register, sounded like shit. There's your secret. But when we did when we did the um the vocoder, it worked a lot better. So uh someone said I thought it was to be artsy. No. No, 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 no. The cat's out of the bag, I'm a fraud. Now you know. It's true. It worked. It just wasn't something, it wasn't something that was going to work otherwise, I feel. So I can show you also to take the piss out of myself further. I can show you a little bit of the demo that I originally came up with and why the guitar solo didn't work. This is the one I made at home. So, you'll hear it's dissonant. I think I showed you Yeah. 
Yeah, that was pretty much it. You could kind of hear it. There's another one there. It was an attempt. I didn't really love it that much, but that was the demo. Okay, I gotta give credit to my friend Dave. Dave is someone who um, we did a show with who watched the streams. And we um, ended up becoming friends. I haven't seen him in a while but because it's me. Because I'm impossible to be uh, friends with. And I think he was he was at the studio briefly. Like he wanted to hang out. And we showed him the song. And he actually picked up a guitar. And he played this first part. This part. The prank phone call guy, Trollicitor, yeah. So he he heard the song, and then he played that, and then we, we liked it. I kept it in the song. Thanks, Dave. Dave gets no royalties to this day, but then again, I barely do myself. There's a purple planet. So that's a fucking mandolin. I've always liked the mandolin. And I didn't think it was going to work for the song. But I like Led Zeppelin. So we left it in the song. the Thanos planet, yes. This is where he lives. <sighs> the falsetto part was not easy for me. But I wanted to be like Josh Homme from Queens of the Stone Age, so I worked at it. And eventually, with the help of some manual tuning as well, it worked. A couple of those are actually fully natural. I like Purple Mood Planet. Fucking beautiful. So the ending here is actually wasn't going to happen. Um, yeah, that might be my favorite or maybe, I don't know. It's hard to say, but that one, that one came together. I like that. It doesn't repeat any parts really. Like it kind of always does something different, but originally it was a little longer because the part did repeat. And the guys were like, nah, don't do that. And then um, the ending, it was going to end on like kind of a, just, at, you know, like quiet. And I was like, no, I hear, I hear a loud ending. 
and then we did that and it worked better but yeah i like that one i think i think it came out okay it was hard it's hard to listen to a little bit um but uh, then you have this i don't have any more demos that you haven't heard sorry to say also does anyone know the hot key to get rid of the interface Because today I found my friends that are in my head. Dad rock moment. No, I don't mind hearing my own voice. So. It's whatever. Got to learn to live with it at some point, right? another happy accident that ended up being in the song which is this whole next part not exactly not exactly planned and we got to do tambourine which is fun friend do you ever have a friend no no chat maybe maybe one that and and again i don't think I really want to talk about like meanings directly but what i want to do is say that if you've ever had a friend then this isn't going to be relatable you're supposed to not have friends um you know, they say they're you're like, oh man, that's so cool that you have that thing, but then, th then they're not. Or have you ever been like that, where someone tells you something nice that happens, and then you're like, oh man, oh good for you, dick. Good for you, asshole. Oh, you got to go see gorillas and nine inch nails in one week. Yeah, it's nice. That's cool. I'm so sad because I never ever really had the right to be. Not a lot of people got what this one really meant. In my, in my, uh, searching. I'm so sad that I'm ranting and raving at an empty wall. And I'm so sad because the way to lift myself up is to see you fall. came from a dream that Mike had. The, uh, the riff. I liked it, so I took it and, uh, expanded on it. And those are not real sitars. Those are expensive. Sorry. I got the money for a sitar, son. It's 
speaking of the universe. Um, another thing, too, is I wasn't sure if we should put this directly after I'm So Happy. It felt a little cheese. It still feels a little cheese, but I've, I've grown to like it. There's also another accident that I ended up having two songs, one called I'm So Happy and one called I'm So Sad. I, I know it may not seem like an accident, but such is life. There's a little moment of sympathy lyrically. Also that guitar solo was the one from the demo I made. Synthesizers are fun. Um, I should also point out, not every... Oh my god, that looks awesome. Not every song is about me, or Mike, or Joe, or Bill. Some of it is from a perspective of like a, a type of person we may know, or a specific person, but usually types um, and observations. Also, someone said, what does even brave people break, break when they're up against the tidal wave mean? Um, I don't know. I think I farted that out around midnight, and I left it in. Probably doesn't mean anything. It's all garbage. It's trash. No, what I think it means, it's, it's a moment of, like, sympathy. Like, um, yeah, no shit. No shit things are tough because life is tough and when you're faced with horrendous things like a tidal wave of, of horrible things happening to you, loss in your family or just constant, constantly being beaten down or not having money or not being able to do what you want to do in life, of course you're going to break. You know, people break, people struggle. Even the strongest people struggle and sometimes silently. I guess, um, yeah. I really don't yeah, do I want to mention uh Robin Williams comes to mind or did when I was writing it I don't know I'm not trying to like the, the song's not about him but it's just an example of you know what I mean so yes oops sorry to make you depressed I mean we did just finish Silent Hill 2 so it's just sympathy use the Gretsch for this. I wanted to use the Strat, but it wasn't working that day. I'm not kidding. about those bells.
nice organ. I think Bill really nailed it on this one. You'll hear me say that a lot. I mean, it's obvious Mike and Joe did a great job. But Bill needs more credit, too. solo i worked i worked on it when we play it live um the thing is bill wasn't really a huge part of the first album but by the time we did this he was much more involved so that's why you know for me it's like oh shit he did a great job with that Accidental section that Bill was just improving that we kept in. Then what is the Holy Ghost mentioned in the song? It's a it's a Christian thing. Um, I'm not going to go into the full details, but I was going through pretty bad existential crisis time, and so that's yeah, and uh, that this came out of it partially and um the riff from that was old but then we we worked on it together and it turned into that uh what can i say I'll, otherwise yeah i used the gretch on that um mandolin when i sang it i was miserable so that you can know that it was a really bad day i don't always have really bad days it may sound like it because i mentioned it a couple times today but when i sang this one i was i was a miserable fuck for many reasons not going to go into them but it worked. I used it. The other thing is, too, there is, um, if you listen to that empty spot during the mandolin thing, you can still hear me sing. It's, it's like really hidden in there. And um, I really like that one, too. I'm, you know, I joke about the band. I say blood bagels, garbage, and we're garbage. You know, I like to maintain a level of modesty because I, I, I really, really don't think I'm all that amazing in any capacity. Um, I know that's not how it's supposed to be because a lot of people in music, it's, it's uh, the people that really make it big seem to love to talk themselves up. Um, I mean, music today comes to mind, but also Oasis when I hear like the brothers talk about their band. We're the best fucking band since the Beatles. And that always made me want to throw up as much as I like the band. That's not so, I don't like that very much. That said, this, this album, I'm proud of. I haven't listened to it. I have a hard time listening to it, but I'm proud of it. Okay, so this next song um, from the stars, I want to just mention, you've heard the demo, if you have heard the demo. And that demo was recorded shortly after I had the dream. I had a dream. I heard the whole fucking song almost in the dream. A lot of it. Woke up remembering and made a demo immediately using the Mellotron guitars and bass and stuff, and it worked out. So there you go. Um, people, 
you know, wonder what it's about. Most people got it. But I think it should be obvious. If you know some of the music I know, maybe? I don't know. Your star is bright. So cool. Use the Rickenbacker for this one. So you get that like twangy feel. Someone just said, would you ever consider getting a Gretsch guitar? I have one. I used it on a lot of this album, actually. I could form the Beatles now. There's a pitch pedal called the Pitchfork that I'm using in the left ear that creates this big 12-string um, sound. I, I hammed it up a little bit during this part. Minor regret. So this next scream was done after Blood Bagel, so it wasn't too hard. It's about Homer Simpson, that's why I say go. Secret's up, now you know. Homer, why do you go away? Someone said method for screaming. Um, blatant disregard for your own health. Really rather not have to scream a whole lot anymore if I could avoid it. Um, I also had some level of laryngitis before Blood Bagel. So one of the songs sounds like me imitating Lemmy. That wasn't fun. 
Uh, what else? Oh, okay. So a couple of things. That end part, Joe came up with an idea there, and we didn't really have an ending for the song. That part I didn't hear in the dream. I woke up before I could hear it. Um, and he kind of came up with that, da, na, 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 and then he did the guitar solo, and it worked. It came together, but it was, yeah, that fir the first part of the song was pretty much what you heard in the demo, and then the second part was what we did together. And again, you know, there's a time for, like, really playing, and solos aren't really fashionable right now for a lot of bands. But I think it worked for that one. And also, the proper drum fills can really add to a song. And, you know, Mike was like really, I mean, he'll tell you. He was really like, I want to get this right. We practiced it a lot. And then it was pretty much from there, like, okay, we have a song and it's good. But here's the thing. How do you, you know, how do you get an ending to like go into another song like how do you make an ending like that not end your album uh, and the answer is you don't so you just do another song there's another one from a dream I like it it's creepy not a lot of people mention loving this one but I can tell you this one's about like Choices, making choices and regretting other choices. Trent Reznor influence with these na na -nas. title rub your eyes was from the dream and bill thought it was like a smoky jazz club so we kind of went for that feel and he figured the smoke would be in your eyes that's why you rub your eyes Okay, I'm going to solve the mystery of the chatter in the middle of the song, because I've been asked about this a couple times. In the middle of the song, you can hear some weird speech. Some of it's backwards, some of it's not. 
It's me and Bill talking about dreams. That's it. Just dreams we had. You can't hear it. Never been to Reno, but wrote a song about it. I don't know why. This is from... This this riff actually started as a Davies Gray song, which is a band me and Mike were in like 10 years ago. Can't believe it's been that long. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was definitely the oldest song that we revived. Should I go to Brazil? Reno. There it is. Somewhere around here is Reno. Yep, it's about right. So now I'm singing over an A and not an E, which is a little trick that no one cares about. True story. That's awesome. Music video incoming. Tom Phil's choice. Primo Tom builds. So, yeah, very Queens of the Stone Age solo I tried to do. And then it goes to a major, which I, I best part for me. Maybe one of the best moments on the whole album for me.
people were speculating what this end part was going to go into. Sorry, it's just in the garden. Before I do that, um, even with the shitty textures, this is still pretty fucking breathtaking. Space Engine is no joke, and I would recommend this to anyone that wants to explore space, but were, you know, was born too early, which is, I think, all of us. Unless there's any time travelers in the audience, please make yourselves known. Did you know that there was a party? I forget who threw the party, but there was a party for time travelers. And they only revealed the date and location in the future. So that if you were a real time traveler, you would know when the party was and you would go back in time and go to it. It was Stephen Hawking. Cool. But no one showed up. It's really unfortunate. They got lost. So this became our most popular song. That was unexpected. But synthesizers are great, as I explained earlier. Yes, there is pitch correction on this song, but we figured it fit it fit the electronic feel of it. So why not? T-Pain I am not, but I'll admit to a pitch correction here and there. Absolutely. Um, I believe Melodyne was used. Forget the name of the synthesizer I use, but I fucking love it. Okay, so this was originally not, if you listen to the demo, this part did not have guitar underneath. But I'm glad we put guitar underneath. Fantasy 7 synth sounds. That's what I call them at least. In the backyard. Buried deep underneath the tree. There's a monster. Take your root in the property. In the garden. Where the weeds are now growing. 
before I do anything, okay, a couple quick things. One, uh, Garden, yeah, I still like the way that song worked out. But here's a true story. I was uh, watching the Pacific, and I fell asleep. And it was like a brief nap, kind of. Well, not a brief. Like I conked out, but I was still conscious. And I heard, I don't know where these fucking things come from, but I just heard in my head. I heard the chorus of the song. And then I we played it on guitar, Joe and I, the next day, in the studio. And it was like, okay, this is cool. This is a good chorus. I just sang it into my phone and played guitar under it and then went back to bed. But I was watching the Pacific, if that means anything. I don't know. And we played on guitar, and he was like, try to take as many of the guitars out of this as you can. And on the way home, and I remember it was freezing out, on the way home, I got the ending part because I was thinking of the song, and I, I heard it. And, I, and, okay, I went home, did the demo, showed it to Mike over dinner I believe or in the studio and then dinner and then he liked it I liked it Joe liked it and we just did it with as little guitar as possible except the end which was I think the, the right choice but yeah that became the big one it was addictive I remember when I finished the demo I had to listen to it a lot because I just wanted to, to hear it I thought it was it was a good like catchy addictive melody so if I could toot my own horn for a second but I don't really know where it came from a lot of times, I don't know where these songs come, come from. They just... Wherever. So... This was me fucking with the new synthesizer BST that I had. I believe I called it Damon in Fruity Loops. But this felt like the right choice. Like, where do you go after being buried alive by your own bullshit and um, not handling your problems? Oh, probably this. This was a one take guitar solo for me. So it's a little fucked up. This is the only time I think it was a one taker. We just left it. I got lucky. Whoever's comparing this to Bon Jovi. Is it Coldplay or is it Bon Jovi? Which one do I have to be more ashamed of? Please let me know so that I can internalize this and then be upset later. The answer is yes. No, I don't care. I like some Bon Jovi. Staten Island is more or less New Jersey, so I may as well like him. This is another mandolin moment. This almost stayed an instrumental. Maybe it should have. Nah, maybe not. solo 
not really a solo. I mean, it, there's a rhythm to it, but it, it's good because it, it makes the song sound more human and less programmed. And, and it's, it's good. It's really good. I mean, there's a thing, you know, there's overplaying and then there's the right amount. that was the right amount and I feel like it again it's a it's a song that could have been just this this like really cold and it kind of is it's it is supposed to be but it could have been just this really cold program thing with no heart to it but it I think it it came out it came out good and then um here's the the thing here's the final song this demo is on on the Bandcamp page and it's pretty damn close to what I have now I like the song. You can throw your conscience away. Okay, so lyrically, real, real quick, I don't want to go into, as I say a million times, I'm not going to go into the full story of it because that's not really what I'm supposed to do here. But that first line should give you some indication. And it does have a lot to do with, um, there's a quote, if you burn a picture to obtain the ashes, it's it's not it's like um if you sacrifice your conscience to ambition you're burning a picture to obtain the ashes that's the quote that i knew for a long time i liked it i don't know where who said it where it came from and i based the song around that quote this one's a little obvious it is i think it should be but i mean you never know people send me interpretations and sometimes they're off like this one's not about bozo the clown i'm sorry to disappoint you Definitely no bugs. Test our game for us. You could leave your heart at the door. You could waste all your time on it more. You could play a victim to a broken mirror. I have some regret about that line because I thought of a better one later. You could play a victim to the smoke and mirrors. Damn. You could be a hero to your own reflection. You could feed your head with empty praise. If you burn a picture, oh, hey, Tom, you are. marijuanas did you smoke to write this none actually for this one i mean for all of them um also i'm using the strat that i talked about last night and the the guitar line that i recorded for the demo at home was used on on the full version here the final version came up with the thing in the left and right ear. Oh wait, yeah, I think he did. He was over my house, he played it into my microphone.
So if you heard the demo, the original lyrics at the end there were in the middle of the night. Not that I know what that means, but that's what I sang. And then when I realized that there was a theme, I changed it to there's another light. So it worked. It, it, ha it was, yeah, there was a lot of uh, accidents that worked out really well. Whether or not that's some kind of inspiration or whatever. I don't know. Also, the end there was supposed to be like digital waves, like at a beach. And I want to let you know that if we start the next album with the sound of a real beach, you have permission to shoot us in the head. All right, me. Just me. I'll speak for myself. Just me. We're not doing that. Okay. Good. Um, Vinny, will you do another, another light? Another light two, electric boogaloo, more light. Just threw my phone by accident. That's cool. Um, yeah, sure. We, you know, maybe we'll sell out one day. We'll do another, another light. Cool. No, I think the the real thing is is always trying to move forward. But uh, it's a good album. I like it. I can still listen to it and enjoy it to some extent. But I prefer to try different things but i really want to thank you for listening and for watching to a lesser extent i guess uh space engine continues to be beautiful and you know we got to see a couple things i'm sure there's even more that can be done to further utilize space engine to its fullest extent and create like cool stuff and views and, and things like that but it's kind of hard to talk and, and do this at the same time but yeah i mean that's uh I, that's pretty much that's the album and like i said i did this for the other albums i never did it for this one and i figured it's an early enough stream that i could get away without without too many pitchforks so i hope the pitchforks were at least you know half raised and not fully raised and if so you can put them down now the stream's over thank you for listening as i said earlier we don't really you know, we don't have a label. We don't really uh, do advertising. So this is the way that the music has gotten out there a bit. Now, the cool thing is, in the year that this album has been out, there have been another a number of people who have discovered us through Spotify or YouTube, just a couple, but still, that don't even know that I'm a streamer or don't even have any idea what Twitch streaming is, which was not expected. That is not something that I've expected, but I've, I've been hearing from some people here and there that this is something they discovered on their own. Uh, in the Garden is doing really well on Spotify, and it keeps showing up in people's Discover Weekly, which is, I guess, the radio for most people these days. So I couldn't be more pleased with that, and I, I figured um, in preparation for well in, in celebration of the years uh, the year that it's been since we put the album out i would do a little space engine um and you know talk about it hope i answered a couple questions hope i brought some insight into it without giving too much away and i hope this was at least enjoyable for everyone else thank you for your patience you won't have to hear about music for a, a while um, unless Another light two, more light comes out tomorrow. No, it won't actually. Sorry about that. You wouldn't want a sequel. It's like Darker Side of the Moon. You wouldn't want that. Vinny, I just got here. Can you start over? Sure. No, okay. Let's um let's play some some of that swingy game. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. Vinny, do you feel that people that listen on shuffle or as singles detracts from your music as a whole? Uh, no, not really. Here, I'll show you the planets one more time while I answer this question. It depends. I mean, I think the album works better as a whole. Some of it is designed to flow into the other songs but we're not talking about a bowie album or a floyd album or okay computer or kid a it's more just 
whatever works best for you. I think um, some albums are meant to be played, like the Fragile from Nine Inch Nails. We were talking about that. Trent Reznor said that those songs don't sound so good on their own as as they do with a couple of their friends near them. And that's true for some of this, but I think listening to an album is great all the way through. That's what I like to do. When I listen to Neil Young, I like to listen to his full album and I get more out of it. But if people are listening to it on shuffle or just one song at a time, I'm not going to tell them how to listen. I, I do that too. There are times I listen to one song from one band or if I'm on Spotify and it does Discover Weekly, that's one song from like 30 bands all in weird order. And as a result, I've discovered a fuckload of bands that way. So while I like to be a bit of a fossil and a Luddite and say, yes, you should listen to the whole album, preferably on vinyl if you can. Um, the other part of me, I'm not like Jack White where I'm like, fuck you if you, if you do that. For me, it's all about how, how it works for you, how you discover it. I forget who said this quote, but they said something like, um, the best sounding music is the music that you hear on a radio from down the block. I, I don't know really who said that, or I guess the context is, it doesn't matter how expensive your speakers are. It's just if the song sounds good to you, it could be played anywhere, I guess. So yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just happy people are listening. As I said, this this band, this venture, is something I've been playing music since I was 18, and I've always wanted to be in a position where I could release music that people would listen to. And if I don't have to bug the stream, very often at least, and people still listen, that's pretty pretty great. It's pretty gratifying. I'm happy with that, and I don't feel like I need to really do a whole lot else. If more happens, that's cool too, to a certain extent. Um, but if too much happens, then I'm going to move to Guam into uh, a hobbit hole. Or maybe New Zealand. I'll move to Hobbiton. All right, you'll find me. My name will be Bilbo, Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins. So let's hope that doesn't happen. But uh, maybe I come to Brazil. All right, stick around for just a minute. And again, highest recommendations to um, Space Engine. I don't think I showed it off that, all that successfully today, but it is really a remarkable piece of technology, and it's a labor of love as well. So, yeah. <laughs> 